All right, folks, so the next step in our loss series here is your shelter. Um, it's going to depend on your environment, what kind of climate you find yourselves in, what you have with you, all that fun stuff. I will tell you guys right now, based on experience, if you're planning on going out there and you think you can build a brush shelter in a half hour, it's going to be probably a pretty crappy brush shelter unless you practice this and you own the skill and you know exactly what you're doing, what you're looking for, and you know it's in that environment that you're going to. Other than that, it's going to be kind of hit and miss. Um, me personally, building an actual good, solid brush shelter takes me on average anywhere from three hours to four hours. But uh, I mostly practice using tarps and tents. That's what I like to do because tarps like this, Arcturus All Weather Space Blanket, doesn't weigh a whole lot, doesn't take up a whole lot of room. And with tarps, there's, I'll just say a lot of configura configurations you can use from the A frame to the lean to to my favorite which is the plow point. And that's what I'm going to build here, guys. I choose a plow point. Basically, up here, the weather can turn pretty quickly. And along with that, you can have it for both fair weather and inclement weather. So, sorry about that. So, speaking of that, what we can do with this is kind of back up a bit. Let's talk about how to select your campsite. You don't want to go anywhere there's a drainage area. So, if it's like a low land, it's kind of wet soil, you don't want to be there. Go find somewhere else if you can. If not, be prepared to make a raised bed at least. And then throw your tarp above you, probably in an A-frame situation where you're flying the tarp. Now, moving on from that. Where I am at right now, there's not a whole lot of hills in this area. There are in some state land uh, south of me and whatnot, but uh, on my immediate property, there's not. So we're going to kind of go with what I have here. Looking around this little campsite, this little clearing, I notice there is a little drainage area right here where if it rains heavy, and I've seen this myself, all the water seems to pool this way. Not over where I'm going to put my shelter at, which is right behind me, as you guys can see. Okay, I'm going to use this pine tree as my anchor. And uh, speaking of that, so we selected our campsite. What can we do to improve this? So we don't want to lay on all this stuff, right? Because that can have ticks, chiggers, mites in it, and that's just a whole other host of problems. So what we want to do is simply take your boot, start scraping away this stuff where you plan on putting your shelter at. Okay, you can clear all that out, no big deal. You can use a fork stick if you want to, no problem. Just get that stuff out of there. Now if you can use this stuff for bedding, I did it in my lean-to brush shelter video. I talked about it, build a smoky fire, hold it above the fire, just where it's not going to catch fire at on the actual material you're holding in your hand, but enough to smoke it and use the heat to get any ticks or chiggers or mites out of there. It's going to fall in the fire and kill them, no big deal. So I'm going to set this up, guys, and we're going to kind of talk about some other stuff. Um, real quick, I will say, because these mosquitoes and black flies are atrocious up here, as well, I'm sure, in the United States, elsewhere, plus the world, it would behoove you to actually pack some mosquito netting with you so you can actually seal off the front of your shelter, still get the convective breeze if you want it, and or, bar minimum, you're going to stop these pesky creators from disturbing your good night's sleep because if you're sleep-deprived in a survival situation, Bare minimum, you're gonna make you're gonna make mistakes. You're not gonna make good choices. You can get hurt in the middle, and worst case scenario, you're just really so tired, you're not paying attention, you trip over something, you fall off a cliff, and die. Don't want that happening to anybody, obviously. So, let's practice to live here, not die. So, we use this. Okay, got my cordage. You don't have to use 550 cord, guys. You can use really anything, even spruce roots or pine roots, as long as you strip the bark off and make them wet, then they're more pliable. Where you choose to make this high, or the height of it, really depends on your personal taste. I like to sit up in my shelter sometimes and work on stuff, so I kind of go mid-chest level right here, okay? Whatever knot you want to choose, go for it. I'm not a big stickler on them. Just make sure that whatever you're tying it with, or however you're tying, tying it, make sure that it's decently tight. And you can untie it in the morning, or whenever you need to depart this location, with ease. You don't want to sit there and waste your cords by cutting it, because you tied the, night too, the knot too tight, or you can't figure out how to untie it. That's a waste of resources. So I'm going to do a simple slip knot. Maybe a couple more. Loop around the knot. 
kind of skewer it. Take my excess cordage, just kind of hang it up here. No big deal. So steaks, guys. I generally don't carry steaks. Say what you will of that. But uh, you can either take steaks, or steaks, excuse me, sticks that you find. You can shave them down, or you can take dead ones. But either way, you want to take your steak, you want to go at at least a 45 degree angle into the grommet holes there. That way it holds it down, just like a trap. First, I like to start with the back. That way, that's hold tight. And then we find some good candidates. Steaks. I want to show you guys something too on the other side of this tent. It's also an option instead of using the grommet holes. All right, so wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We're done. You got enough room in there to sit up and move around, lay down a little bit. But like I said, 45 degree angle. Start with the back so it's taut, so the water's going to run down if it does rain. This is what I want to show you guys. Hopefully it's a camera view. There we go. You can take some string. This is bank line. Tie a loop around it. That way you don't have to worry about, okay, hey, is this stick big enough to fit my grommet hole? Is it too small? Is it going to break or whatever? This loop is pretty big. It's like over an inch in circumference. So you can take that, put whatever stick you want in there, pound on the ground, or just stick a stick in it like I did there. Then we don't have to dick around with shaving down sticks or anything. You just throw it up, wham, bam, done. So, that's your shelter. And again, you want to take some kind of natural material. Pine bombs work best around here. Throw them in there. Make sure when you lay them compressed, they're roughly four, six, or eight inches thick, depending on the weather. So, there you guys go. And also pay attention where the wind's mostly blowing. You don't want your entrance facing that. Just because it can affect a breeze, unless you want that. And kind of like you guys can see here, I had a fire here, a little close for where I put this. You want to take one step, one full step away. So right here would be a good spot for a fire and a reflective wall, somewhat in a 90 degree angle or a V shape. So you get that radiant heat. Hits that mylar, warms you up. There you go. So anyways guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll continue this on.